Mr. Uh, Vandenberg, lead us in the call today. If you wish, please. Yes. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call. And uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge Mr. Rouse is on his way from a baseball game. He's watching his son play. They went into over uh, extra innings with Manchester. So he called and said he'll be here as soon as they win. So <laughs> I told him don't come if they don't. All right, uh, we have some firefighters to swear in. So I'd like to call those gentlemen up front here. And we'll call them in. Uh, we'll have them swear in, sworn in one at a time. So uh, Michael, you want to come in first? <clears throat> All three of you can come in if you would, please. You got the two gentlemen can sit down, and uh, I'll turn the table over to uh, Chief Durkee, and he can tell us uh, who we're getting here and tell us a little bit about them. Well, this is Michael Rinaldi, and he seems like he has some familiarity with a lot of people in the room, so uh, maybe you guys can tell me more about him than I know. Uh, but we're, we're excited to have him on board. Uh, next is uh, Matt Litton. He has previously served with us. He's currently a Barbadan firefighter, and uh, he's, he has family in the area, and we're looking to get him back on board. And Tom Ross, he's been hired by the township already, and he's already completed his probationary packet, so once he's hired, we can just put him on his, our payroll, and he can start serving. And once again, this is to help us, because um, we keep moving people along, we just, and we either lose availability, or some people just decide that they've got other interests. I think I've got about three or four people that just uh, aren't working our shifts anymore, and things like that, so we're probably going to... Uh, call them and see what their intentions are. But in the meantime, these people are, these firefighters are going to be filling in for those uh, that we're losing or that are no longer active. Thank you, Chief. All right, so Michael, if you could come forward, please. Ask you to raise your right hand and repeat the oath of office. I, Michael Rinaldi, do solemnly and sincerely promise that I will conform to and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and the state of Ohio and will support the charter, the rules and regulations of the fire department, and all ordinances and resolutions of the city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. I will be loyal and with strict adherence, obey the duties of my office set forth by law, and the will of the citizens of the city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. Congratulations. Thank you. Matt, we'll do you next. Okay. How are you, sir? Can I have a copy of that? All right. If you would, please, Matt, raise your right hand and take the oath of office. I, Matt Lidden, do solemnly and sincerely promise that I will conform to and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and the State of Ohio, and will support the charter, the rules and regulations of the fire department, and all ordinances and resolutions of the city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. I will be loyal and with strict adherence obey the duties of my office set forth by law and the will of the citizens of the city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. Congratulations. And Thomas. Thank you, sir. Please raise your right hand and take the oath of office. I, Tom Ross, do solemnly and sincerely promise that I will conform to and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America and the state of Ohio and will support the charter, the rules and regulations of the fire department, and all ordinances and resolutions of the city, Cal city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. I will be loyal and with strict adherence obey the duties of my office set forth by law and the will of the citizens of the city of Canal Fulton, Ohio. Congratulations. I need you to, um, I need to sign all three of your um, oaths there, if you could turn those in to me. And then uh, I will give you one copy back, and we'll have you all officially sworn in. I make a motion while they're still in the room. Thank you, Sue. Accept <laughs> their um, employment with the uh, uh, Canal Fulton Fire Department at this time. Okay, we have a motion by Sue Mayberry, seconded by Bonnie Donaldson. Any discussion? Roll call. Mm. Danny Loesch? Yes. Dan Booker Jr.? Yes. Scott Schwab? Yes. 
Sue Mayberry? Yes. Bonnie Donaldson? Yes. Very yes. <laughs> A little bit. Oops, go ahead. <laughs> One of them made it Three people. <laughs> Chief Durkee, you didn't have a cake for him or anything like that? Well, I guess I'm real neglectful because my wife was kind of interning with Frank. He's like a little donut. She dropped off 20 donuts at the fire station. But that wouldn't have been enough to go around. Yeah. Okay, Matt, there's your copy. Tom, uh, Tom that's yours. And Mike, thank you. And your families are welcome to stay for the meeting, or you guys are welcome to leave. And uh, if you're going to Canal Grill, put the tab on Chief Durkin. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to report of standing committees. I don't believe we had any committee prior to this. Citizens' comments for agenda matters. Okay, move on to correcting and adopting the record of proceedings. I make a motion that we adopt the record of proceedings for March 19th, 2019. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Sue Mayberry, seconded by Scott Schwab. Any discussion? I only wanted to point out two people's names um, on page 8. Representative Slaby, I think it's S-L-A-B-Y or E-Y, I don't know. Just why. Just why. And then Mr. Romer is... Um, I think the fourth paragraph or fourth line down, uh, R-O-E-M-E-R, -E -E just to make those two corrections other than that. They're very well done. All right. Okay, we have motion and second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Scott Schwab? Yes. Danny Loesch? Abstain. Sue Mayberry? Yes. Sam Brooklyn Jr.? Yes. Eric Whittington? Yes. Barney Donaldson? Yes. Okay, uh, senior citizens, I did talk to um, Grant Joyce, and uh, he was on vacation last week, and uh, he's hoping to get to uh, work on the back door of the senior center this week or sometime next week. Next week. They didn't get it finished? The, the door? Yeah. No, I, I mean, uh, he, he was out of town last week when he took my call, so... I was just there I yesterday. Saw, okay, I just thought I saw some guys who did work on it earlier. Yeah. I thought it was yeah, we won. Okay. Right. Did we win? Yep, three, two. Okay. All right. Yay. <laughs> All right, so we'll get that work done. And I do want to point out that, uh, and I probably left it on my desk, The um, yesterday was, uh, and today is uh, the National Day of Volunteerism. So uh, with... Uh, that being said, we have so many organizations in our community who we could not survive without their volunteerism. Between the TAP meeting, uh, Sarah was here for the old canal days. Um, she leads that. Uh, Shell with disabilities, uh, tourism, just goes on and on. The uh, Heritage, um, or the uh, HPC, the Planning Commission. Uh, literally, I'm leaving people out because you, we don't realize how many people volunteer to make this city happen. So today is their day. I was at the Senior Center yesterday for the uh, RSVP day and uh, read, a read a proclamation. And uh, in the proclamation, we talked about how much better of a job our churches and organizations do responding to emergencies than our federal government. And I think you see that in where there's disasters with hurricanes and tornadoes and things like that. It's just incredible. So we are truly blessed here in Canal Fulton to have great people volunteering. So thank you. Uh, moving on to community service. No report. Fire Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you for uh, hiring the three new firefighters. Uh, also, uh, it wasn't included in the Council packet, but hopefully you found the January and February <coughs> Uh, monthly reports um, that I laid in, your, in the places. Uh, also, uh, one, one of the things I noticed, but uh, no good reason for it, our call volume is down a little bit, um, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, just some things that are going on in the fire department. Hopefully you saw the new Engine 5 that was parked out across the, uh, the street as you were coming in. So it's in service and it's rolling. Um, and this past week or so, we were going through radio installs, putting them in the trucks and things like that. 
Uh, we're still working off portable radios because the mobile radios have not been pro programmed yet, so I've got to follow up with the Motorola on that. And also, uh, uh, the fire department's beginning to feel the impact of the YMCA because we are being called out to, uh, to in, for some opinions on locations of devices like the Knox box, and also I had to go out and witness the, the sprinkler blocking that keeps the pipes from moving should there be a large water flow. So, so the YMCA is coming along, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Chief, I was at uh, Chapel Hill yesterday, actually, Crop Commons. Uh, they offer me free lunch if I go there on the first Monday of the month. So I've uh, been meeting with them. And one of the questions I fielded yesterday was about billing. Uh, they wanted to make sure that it, it didn't matter who responded to the call, Lawrence Township or Canal Fulton. The billing isn't any different for their insurance purposes. That is correct. We treat, treat both residents the same, Canal Fulton, Lawrence Township. Our, the fire departments treat the residents the same, whether they're Canal Fulton or Lawrence Township. Right. And basically, it's... Uh, your taxes are considered part of your uh, deductible or your copay, and uh, we only accept what the insurance pays okay. for our residents of right. Canal Fulton and Lawrence Township. It doesn't matter who responds to the call. That's correct. Okay. And if, there's, if they experience something different, let me know. All right. Thank you. All right. Any questions for Chief Durkee? Moving on to Chief Swartz. Thanks, Mayor. Um, members of Council, I was on vacation for most of between the last time I saw you in Alabama. and. Uh, Officer Wilson did a good job uh, covering me. And, uh, she has no report, really nothing to speak of. We, um, however, we, the mayor and I are uh, going to interview two officers for our sergeant's positions tomorrow, and we expect to have them being sworn in at the 16th uh, council meeting. And that's all I have. Any <coughs> questions for Chief Swartz? <coughs> Moving on to our engineer, Mr. Gillespie. Thanks, Mayor. Um, I guess the only thing to report tonight is we have the community park project that was advertised in the top of it. Um, there's a, another item on the agenda that was added late for an archaeological study. We just found out today that uh, through the wetland consultant that uh, we, they're requiring this archaeological study now, so that potentially could uh, push the bid at date out some, so that's something we'll have to uh, look into a, a little more. So that's the PO for the fifteen thousand nine hundred thirty dollars. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So since you brought it up, um, yeah, we found out at one thirty this afternoon about this. I uh, spoke with our wetland consultant, and uh, this uh, Ohio Valley Archaeology is the only from the state of Ohio that we could find. There's another one in West Virginia that can <laughs> So this is the one that they they recommend. Um, and I'm in been in discussions with some area farmers. If we can go out there and plow part of the field, we can knock seven thousand dollars off. Of it. So I'm going to leave us some, some people. Maybe even Scott has some leads. But basically, uh, this price here is to go out there with a shovel and start digging in that 10.8 acre parcel we're going to develop as a park. Uh, if we can uh, take one plow and windrow it up and down 15 feet apart, then they can just lob walk it. Look, they're looking for arrowheads and things like that. I guess that's what they're looking at. Or anything, pottery or any, any evidence of, a, of an old uh, prehistoric campsite. So that's the kind of stuff they look for. Why are we required to do that? Uh, when, we, when, we did, when we did the wetlands delineation, the Army Corps, it triggered their look at it. Plus, we're using federal funds. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know. I was kind of shocked when I saw that. So why doesn't have to do it for their part? No, because they hadn't filled any wetlands in. We're the ones filling in the wetlands. Is this all going to be covered under the grant? Oh yeah, yeah, it's covered under the grant. That's part of it. We don't have anything left, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Subtract, subtract. So that's where we are with that. One. Hopefully, I could, if I can get save seven grand on and get a farmer to donate some time, maybe a paper, his gas, and buy him breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Knock that price down. All right. Any other questions for Mr. Gillespie? All right, moving on to streets. Mr. Uh, Hosking is here, so uh, if anybody has any questions for the street department, want to bring us up to date on any uh, bids or anything like that that's um, going on, Gary? <clears throat> well, we finalized uh, the decision on our bucket truck, and you'll see the PO for that. Um, I think it's the best one out of the, we looked at about five or six and this one will do the best for what we need and actually go above 
Um, if you <coughs> if you drive out to Churton, you'll notice that we've cut back the limbs quite a bit and the branches overhanging the road. So it clears the road out a little bit more so the sun can get to them. That's what we're planning on starting doing is trying to get the roads opened up a little bit more. Because of course, when you get that apron or that umbrella of trees, you know, it, it causes the road to stay moist, wet, and uh, it just deteriorates quicker that way. So if we get the sun on it, it'll, it'll keep it in a better condition. Um, <clears throat> we have two catch basins that we're gonna start doing um, on Market Street on the west side. Starting next week, we're waiting for um, books to come out and market. They're starting to cave in, so we have to repair those. Uh, we opened uh, street material bids today, so we have um, you know our, all of our materials that we need for uh, the year: um, rock, stone, fill, asphalt. Uh, we're putting out um, soon to put out chip and seal bids for the streets for chip and seal this year. Okay. So that's going to um, the engineering company here soon. Uh, I spoke with ODOT about 93 yep. and the blinking light, the intersection through there, and I've got a phone call into their engineer about how we can go about marking that so they don't go left of center and you know have that confusion up there at the blinking yep. light. Uh, the only other thing I have is our mowing crew will be returning on um, April 15th. Okay. They will start. So. That's good news. I mean, last year we got behind the eight ball because we didn't have a mowing crew. Yeah. So this year, our the two guys we had last year did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Um, and they're coming back this year. Okay. So Brandon and Ronnie will be here um, mid-April and ready to go. Okay. Uh, just to point out, we've had a couple, uh, and um, one of them I met last night in person, but he uh, emailed me earlier in the uh, at the end of last year. Um, it was actually last summer, and said, you know, we were talking about the intersection downtown, and he um, pointed out to me as somebody new to Canal Fulton, the blinking light up on the hill was, you know, more of a scare to him. And so, uh, Mr. Hosking and uh, street departments following through there, we had to wait until the weather was warm enough, and we want to get some paint on the road, and we want to make sure we do it right. So, okay, um, I. Um, I wanted to mention to council, last year we uh, gave you some estimates, and it might have been later than that because it was when Mark Peterson was here. Uh, Mark put together a package for the um, footbridge, the green footbridge that's mm -hmm. over the canal. And um, so uh, we had bids for uh, shoring up the foundation. Uh, we had bids for... Uh, sand, uh, not sand blasting, blasting, but it was uh, for <coughs> power washing. Power washing, yeah. Power washing and painting the, were they painting the bridge, Gary? Yes, three, three, coats, three coats of paint. Okay. And then the other thing, uh, we did cut down the trees that they uh, thought on each side of the, uh, the bridge were compromising the foundation, the tree roots. And then the other thing was the decking. Did, did we get a price on decking too, or we yeah. had a, yeah we that had an estimate grand, right yeah it was two years ago yeah um, 2017 is when we had the estimate for the okay. concrete wall all right so um, with that being said we wanted to move forward with one of our project you know one of those things either shoring up the foundation whatever we could but um, through the conversation I thought since we bought the bucket truck maybe our guys could power wash the bridge and paint it and then that led us to the question of perhaps that bridge is painted currently with lead paint so before we do anything to it power washing and having the fear of the paint chips blowing into the canal um, we had a, a company go out last friday and uh, took a sample took samples to send away to the lab to see if it's lead paint and uh, so once we know that then that'll kind of dictate our direction moving forward on the footbridge so thanks gary and all these guys in the street department any questions for them? Wouldn't you think the um, shoring it up would be kind of like the first part of it, the first step because paint usually over the final final fix so you don't chip it with you know yeah um, you know, we, logical order yeah it was just a part of a conversation Sue where you know no we have to consider that I, yeah, I agree yeah. I, I know so Let you me. know just having people you know just if it's blown in the wind knowing that whether it's right. lead paint or not um, people walking across it so that's um, that's kind of why and it, it was hundred and fifty five dollars for for that test so we you know we can start there but it is a local treasure that's for sure and um, 
So we want to get that going. And really, we can't get any grant money for it, just so people know if, um, um, if, if you use federal dollars, you'd have to make it ADA compliant. So right now, you know, people climb up the, the steps. Question. Yeah, I, I have a question for the street department. Um, I live on High Street, corner of High and Water, mm -hmm. and um, I've noticed, you know, I've been there for 40 years almost, and we've built up and built up and built up. And if you look over at the church, you know, it's about that high from their parking area. And on, on my street, it's higher than my driveway now. So I'm getting a lot of water runoff and the edges are just totally crumbling mm -hmm. you know i mean i'm picking up pieces of all right lynn i don't want to cut you off but sure. i got to stay on the agenda so what it, you said is was your questions for yeah the street department yeah so that's I, that's for council members i'm sorry oh, okay, okay. Sorry. so we'll get back to that we can <laughs> do it under okay yeah <laughs> thank you very much all right um they get mad at me if i take too long all right moving on to uh public utilities and um, I, I'm just, I don't know if there's an elephant in the room or not, but I know there's been, and I don't know what y'all want to do with, um, you know, there's been a lot, I guess, I don't do social media, so I'm not on any Facebook sites or anything like that, but I do know that, you know, we had a planning commission meeting last week, a HPC meeting, and I want to get to all these questions, but if anybody has any questions about anything we're doing that, um, related to trees, planters, uh, water lines, and anything like that. I, I do just want you to bring it up, otherwise we'll just keep moving on with the meeting. So um, I just want it to be civil and anybody has any questions? They're larger than what, what they were supposed to be. Oh. Uh, A lot. Well, um, I guess. Eric said four by four, you said 32 inches, and now they're six by three. No, then I don't think there's, they're they're what you saw they were. This is uh, a picture. Yeah, I saw. Of, okay, so that's what we're getting. So there's they're no different than this. This is exactly. And what size is that? Uh, I think they're 32 inches wide by I don't know how many. I think six it's feet. 48 six inches. Feet. Six, six feet. feet. Yeah. yeah, I don't know, but it's it's exactly what was there for everybody to look at. That's what council voted on. I didn't see it. Okay. Sorry. You voted on it. I didn't know it was there. Yeah, so, um, yeah. I don't like them anymore. I, I don't either at all. No. Are they all built? Um, they can't be in the air. Well, they're not all built. They're all paid for. So the I guess the option would be if, you know, we could move them to another location, um, which would, it doesn't matter to me. I think it was. you paid them for them? I didn't pay him for him. You voted on no, a video. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that he hasn't been paid for all of it yet. Right. But okay. You, you, How many do they have them. done? I don't know. He's building them in parts, like the, the frames, the walls, so it's like a, an assembly process. I'm just trying to say if we could halt it now and not build it anymore. You, you're going to pay for them. Why? Because you passed the P.O. Can't we change it? Did no. he buy all the product? Yes. When you're, you know... When you're doing 18 planters, that's um, that the savings is to buy all the material at once. So. Take it back. But if you have the materials, can't you have a redesign of the end product? If you want to pay for it. Why, why would you pay for the redesign? Because he's building what we contracted him to build. There's an actual contract. That was signed on the design. Um, no, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, I, I, an actual contract. I know it is a contract, but um, you know it looks or is like. Or it word of mouth? It, you know, maybe the benches or something is misleading, so, so it makes it look a lot bigger than it really is. So to stand no, by the, one of these would probably be a good idea. I think. The top looks like it's an umbrella stand rather than for a tree. Well, one with a. <coughs> wasn't, wasn't I mean, it does. Put out there. Umbrella. Wasn't it put out there? In December? In December. And then you ask everybody to go out there and take a look at it. I didn't hear that. Yeah. I, he yeah. did say it was going to be out. I didn't know where. Yeah. I didn't either. I didn't know where, and when I went out, it was already gone. I'm not sure how long it was there. But 
we didn't see any prototype prior to it was just discussion it was it was not anything etched in stone of other than a box that Eric had talked about um, extensively at several meetings of it being aesthetically nice to where the downtown's going to look great and we even talked about how much is in the in the sidewalk right now light poles stoops things like that now this thing is going to be taking up a lot more the, of the sidewalk that I ever thought it was going to take up yeah. personally my suggestion too would be we'll get them built we'll put them there and then plan B would be we have another park that we could move them to and um, didn't we pay for them out of the downtown fund right so, so we could use them in the park up there we, we well we'd have to basically purchase them from the downtown renovation and put that money back in there well, why but, can't we just have them change the plans and take the benches off and the top off because by taking by putting the top on right away you've limited to how big the tree can get exactly so well how big do you want the tree to get Eric? Mm -hmm. well we we're talking about a 10-year plan that would give it enough time to grow and fill up the box and provide shade for a while before we replaced them because mm -hmm. you don't have to plant a little tiny small tree we can start with medium-sized trees to begin with in these and it would last a good seven to ten years before we would have to take the ball out so realistically I didn't think there was going to be a top on it that was going to you know um, that was going to determine how wide the, the base gets before we have to eliminate them the whole point was to let them have at least a good decade to where they could grow somewhat full and provide some shade yeah. and, and look aesthetically pleasing so, so if you had if you and then with the benches I, the benches do look nice it's kind of cool i like that but at the same time um it's it's a safety violation you know what if some little kid was sitting on there and flipped off on the side of the curb or something got hit by a car i mean a million things can happen i mean somebody could walk into the stop sign and want to sue the city for it i mean but that just something simple like that can't we talk to the guy about just doing a simple redesign before he finishes building them and yeah. he finishes the rest of them know. we can do we whatever you want it doesn't I mean, matter to me I, this, this body you, you, can change their mind right? i've never heard of a place where you can't change your mind that's what i was going to say too i mean we, well, we're we're coming, i'm just telling you can change. we acted too hastily we said okay we know these things are going to look nice but we voted without seeing an actual plan right. that's where we messed up and we have to own that we mistake did. We did. but sorry. there has like sue said there has to be a way for us you to, didn't see this dan no not until we and that's on me. That is, I'm not blaming anybody. That's entirely on me for not seeing what was there. But it's, it is all of there. our fault. I mean, we were trying to put out a fire really quick and come up with a solution very quick that was going to look nice and be efficient and save the city money over yeah. over 10 years. And it was a good plan. Yeah. But we didn't follow through with it 100% the way that we should have. And we upset a lot of people. And I'm not married to it. It doesn't matter to me. So, you know what? If we have a thousand dollars left of cedar wood because we didn't put the benches on there in the tops and maybe we can give it to the kids to figure out something that are planting other trees around the parks and have them build some other little planters out of it but yeah. have you done anything with uh, picking out trees yet yeah, i got a whole stack of them right here i'm just waiting okay. to see what we're going to do to narrow it down to I'm kind of breaking it down, listening to what people are saying. They don't want berries falling out of the trees and staining cars. They don't want big, long pods. They don't want maples because they're growing into the foundation. So I'm kind of looking at all these different things to, to narrow it down to the best five. I've got like 40 of them to sort through. And okay. Can, I'm sorry. Can I make, I mean, can I, I was going to actually make it not to cut you off. I'm very no, sorry. Fine. No. One of the things I was thinking after seeing the video last week is, you know, another way that we can make good with the Heritage Society is let's <coughs> jointly together pick out a tree that they think would look good with a historic downtown as well. Instead of just us making this decision like we did with the boxes, granted it's, I don't know if we <coughs> have the permission to do it or what, it doesn't matter, it's done. But why don't we make a joint effort moving forward so we start doing things together with other groups in this town that make a difference? Um, I think that would be probably the best bet. That's fine with me. Like I said, it doesn't matter to me. I was responding. He asked me to get estimates. I got estimates and put I mean, it in front of everybody. Again, Joe, we're not blaming you. Yeah. It's just, you know, okay. we, we all, all right. I'll take the blame. 
That was my fault. I pushed this through as fast because I wanted it done and I wanted to make everything look pretty and it's on all. And have it's all none of us, none of us even thought to say anything to HPC at the, when we first started talking about it for various reasons, and then Sue brought it up at, but I think we had already kind of been pretty far into the discussion by the time anybody mentioned anything. Yeah. Again, it's on us. Okay. We, we made a mistake. So, so we'll redesign. I'll talk to. So if we can talk, talk about to Al and um, taking turn the, the top off, the and taking the benches off, and just keeping it the the box, and having one of the one of the sides still has to be a door, so that we can remove the entire ball to replant the tree in the park. That's yeah. because that's what we talked about in the first place. Was just at least one of them a swinging door to to pull the whole ball out to replant. Because yeah. some of these, that's another thing. Some of these, you know, aren't going to be replantable, and some are. So. Yeah. So I can make a suggestion. Yep, Dan. Uh, uh, any of these built now? How many are built now? I think, um, you know, it's, it's. There's a couple of them built. My suggestion is, is to put one in place and stare at it. And yeah. See what it looks like. If, in my opinion, is. nobody made a mistake here yet because they're not in place. No one's really got a real feel for it. We're looking at a picture here that, that fills up the whole page good, and it appears to be something gigantic and it just may not look like. So let's put something in place, stare at it for a while. And put it in a place that's conducive to, you know, at the safety of everybody, you know, if you want to keep the benches yeah. on. Put, you know, put, it, put it in the most tight spot just to see where, what it might look Gary like. Gary and I have been around, and, you know, we, there's a lot of factors to, um, to consider where you put them with parking spaces and things like that. And, uh, you know, I just want to point out that yeah. I think there were 19 trees cut down yeah. uh, that I counted. I went around and took pictures where the trees to used to be. So yeah. that over the time that the trees were planted in 1992 or four, you know, we've been losing trees um, on a, at a steady pace. So we were about 50%. So. All right, we'll get to work on that. I'll get one put out here. And, uh, and who would we talk to, Sue? Who would we talk to about the, the historical? Preservation? Yeah, to have them do a, a joint effort on picking out the trees. I think that would be. Yeah. Workman? Yeah. We'll, we'll dump it on him. Yeah, no, I don't want to dump it on them. I want to work together with them on it. Yeah. Yeah. And it'd be yeah. great if you could come to the HPC meeting. I was going to say, we either do it, we could go to HPC or have HPC come to us and you know, sit down. I would suggest <laughs> us going to them. That's I my agree. opinion. I went to the last meeting. That's really interesting. All right. I've been to a few. We good to move on? I'll, uh, if I understand, I'll tell you to stop producing. We'll put one or two downtown, see what they look like, get people's feedback, and we'll go from there. Gary had something to say too. Yep. Just just to clarify, you know, you guys are talking about how big and bulky they are. These these boxes will fit within the space where the tree was at. If you look at most of the trees, there is there's a um, limestone base all around that. That this planter is going to fit within that. Just so you guys have a visual idea. I mean, it looks bulky. Is that yes. with the benches on it or just a With, with the itself? benches on it. It's the same width as what that tree had the access for anyway. Just, you know, I mean, I, like I said, I'm hearing people talk about how bulky they look, how you know, they're going to fit within that same space where that tree was at. But the tree doesn't take up the whole space. No, it doesn't, but you're still going around the tree anyway. So, yeah, I mean, it fits within. So when you go downtown and you look where that tree was at, no, I that, know what you're talking about. Yeah, that right. planter will fit within that same spot. All right. I don't want to rush us along, but we got direction and we'll follow it. So thank you. Uh, planning and zoning. More good stuff. Mr. Dulesky, um, we um, had a um, we had a recommendation from uh, planning commission um, that we vacate. And I apologize. I didn't run copies of this. This is Vermont court. Um, I talked to Mr. Dulesky and uh, uh, I just, you know, we, I have the checklist here for uh, alley, uh, vacation of alleys and it would be uh, Vermont Court that we're doing, but I don't know if any of you saw this picture. Um, yes. you, you've seen it? Mm -hmm. Where mm -hmm. you have... Runs along the canal. Yeah, yeah uh, the, along the canal. We have houses, we have garages, we have swimming pools, everything like that built into the easement Is and that the 849 or whatever yeah seven, uh, 549 something like something. that it doesn't make it all the yeah. way to me does it no i don't think so <laughs> all right no it stops but it um find it. I tried driving yeah i mean it i it, it was it went through the old venables place and that's my mm -hmm. great aunt and uncle so i spent a lot of time there as a kid I so didn't know, but i found it i'm fine eventually but yeah 
Okay, so uh, we'll get the uh, street superintendent, fire chief, and uh, police chief to uh, you know give a rolling to make sure they they don't have uh, any concerns, uh, and then um, planning commission approves it and sends it to council. And if the planning commission disapproves, they they've already approved it. Um, notice of hearing, and uh, so we'll follow start following our revised code. Council passes the resolution, so we'll be bringing that forward to you. So. But it is uh, it is a mess. I will tell you that. So hopefully we can work through that. And um, finance director. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have nothing to report tonight. I'll answer any questions. Did your son get to win? No, he was. Uh, we were home team, so he was warming up to go in, and uh -huh. we we scored the winning run before he got in. So he'll pitch tomorrow. <coughs> All right. Any questions for the finance director? All right, city manager. Uh, yes, I just found out today that the uh, House of Representatives of the State of Ohio did pass their bill for the gas tax, and uh, mm -hmm. according to the numbers I have, if it goes through, um, it'll be about a fifty-nine thousand dollar increase in our streets budget next year if it goes through as proposed. Uh, the one the governor did was a lot more, and uh, that would have given us one hundred sixty thousand. That's a huge price increase in gas. And, I think the house represents a little bit more reasonable with that. What was the what was the percentage? It was 10, 10 and nine, 18, wasn't it? Yeah, 10, yeah, 10, 10 and 5 cents or 10.8 cents. On gas and then diesel was 18 yeah. or something, if I remember right. The numbers I got through scats, this is where they were, so we'll see. We'll see how it shakes out. I think it has to pass the Senate also. Um, also, uh, we did connect uh, that that place on Arcadia to the water at 13775 was connected to city water last week. And uh, I just want to, you know, I, I think there was some confusion around that, so I just want to let you know publicly, um, I uh, went to each one of the neighbor's house and knocked on the door um, last Sunday, uh, a week ago, and apologized for us, you know, for not for them not being informed that the work was going to going to get started. So uh, I own that, and uh, I apologize to them. And um, so <coughs> I, when I screw up, I screw up. So um, that was my screw up for not letting them know. And um, but the the water is running. I think they were getting like 24 pounds of pressure, um, with without a, a booster pump. The resident. Um, and, and I got to tell council, you know, I've been mayor for a little over three months, and one of the first calls I got was from the resident, the first resident on Worcester Street that doesn't have city water. And, you know, when you become mayor, you, there's things you just don't know. And one of the things I did not know was there were citizens who lived in the city, but they don't have access to city water and city sewer. So basically, anybody above that green tank that's behind the West Side Fire Station doesn't have access to city water. So uh, when this gentleman called me, he called because we were putting in new lines on Worcester Street, but we stopped right before his house. And he was all excited and he wanted city water. And um, so for three years, I've been kind of going to meetings and coming up with things to do to try to help him get water. <coughs> so when this opportunity presented itself, I was thinking about him for uh, getting services to it and his well is working fine right now but he, he was fearful of what happens if his well goes out like this gentleman at the uh, end of the street and uh, so uh, at least we we know we have an option to uh, to give to other people hopefully in that situation that uh, there, there might be hope there when we get the water tower and water run down to them on a permanent basis so thank you all I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Posey, I cut you off there. Well, just to add to what the mayor explained, I, we were criticized for not following city rules on this, and, I, and uh, criticized heavily on, on social media. I'm still asking what rule or what procedure was violated here. I, I, I'm still not clear. The accusations came, but I'm asking what, what procedure was violated. I, I, I don't know. Because I did do some research on, um, you know, granting, uh, extending water uh, before people annex. And 
We had a lot of examples. Fulton East, there's 130 people who have city water who aren't annexed into the city. Uh, we have Lindsay Precast that uh, paid to have water run down there. They're not in the city. We had an agreement with the school district to run water out there before they were annexed and eventually they had signed a, a, an agreement ahead of time similar to this situation where we, we got it signed ahead of time saying that they're going to get annexed into the city. And then uh, we, we found some residents on Warwick that are, um, you know, there's two residents out there that are receiving city water that never annexed into the city. So, um, Don't you need a permit to open up the road? Um, it's I in our code, um, and it's supposed to go through the uh, clerk of council. Yeah, and um, that wasn't done. I don't believe was it. I don't. Um, I'll check with the street superintendent, but I don't think I it mean, was. Yeah, and, and, and so and, that's a, that's one piece that mm -hmm. in in researching it yeah. that I found. Okay, and then not the people not knowing that projects mm -hmm. gonna you know. Right, right, and I like I said I own that, but, and here's what I found out Sue like. We, we had the same incident across the street here, you know, where you see that nice paver stone, you know, that's an example of someone just doing a project and they never came to us to... Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, oh, yeah. So... Oh, yeah. Um, so but we'll... See, but see, they didn't, that didn't happen overnight. Yeah. You know, it's there right behind, right next to City Hall. So if you're seeing something happening that you know is not right, you got to go over and say, hey, uh, Stop work. Well, it was done in a day, basically. You know, they um, just came in and scraped it, put the base down, and started putting the stone in. Yeah, well. So, all right. We need our eyes open better, I think. Right. For all right. Certain things. All right. Well, thank you. All right. Moving on to um, Parks and Rec. I have a pass out that. Um, are you done, Mark? I'm sorry. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> I cut you off before you were done. I'm sorry. Well, the criticism was we were supposed to annex it before we ran the water. That that was a criticism. Oh yeah, that was me. Okay, I mean, that I, was me. I just knew all I heard was that the annexation agreement was being worked on. I didn't know whether he had signed it before he actually started the work. I didn't know. We weren't told that. So, but that but that that rule wasn't. There was no rule in place for the annex before we. Yeah. The water. There was a policy. I had. I showed you. I showed you. Uh, uh, ordinance. There's a policy for annexing that, that prior order, to you that know extending isn't water. Code. What? The ordinance isn't current. I have the current code. No, it's a policy. I don't think it's an actual ordinance. It's a policy. And that, that thing you sent me that I had a copy of was just an agreement had to be made before the extended alliance, not annexation. So that. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I read it. That's what's okay. Happened, so, I mean, I don't, I don't appreciate getting emails saying that should be you know. Let's see. Uh, I'm setting a poor example. I mean, what was that all about? I don't understand. What's the motivation behind that? Um, I don't know. Yeah. You tell me. I don't know. Yeah, I drafted the same type of agreement with the school. Well, you're familiar with emails. Doing the annex. So you tell me. Yeah. I'm just asking. You. No. I said you tell me. Yeah. You should know. I should know what? I'm just asking a simple question. All right, moving on to uh, Parks and Rec. I just gave you a pass, uh, a handout for the meeting uh, for active transportation that we had at uh, Canal Grill on March 27th. EDG uh, uh, led the meeting for us, and uh, so you see there some um, the uh, the slides that we uh, had from the presentation. <coughs> and um, I guess it's the third page in, if everybody could go to the third page in. That uh, shows the designated area. And I, I think I'll shoot an email out to you because these aren't in color. But uh, what we're looking for is like a, um, um, a combination trail, walking path, bike path, and um, so that would connect the sidewalks that we're missing right now. The, because of the Bell store out on the east end of town, they have sidewalks all the way down and there's just some open spots. And um, so what this uh, transportation grant would do is um, try to create a, a, a safe pathway from east of town where um, the, um, 
dollar store, the bell stores are in uh, on Locust Street all the way in to downtown. And then fill in the uh, open spots that we have from the Denshire allotment where the sidewalk ends right there at Heritage Square. So um, we're really excited about it. So if you continue through the, the packet. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. Is it on both sides for a sidewalk? No, just one would, side. Just one side is what they're proposing. So we'll yeah. be on my side. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be on your side, actually. Uh, um, and the um, yeah. Oh, Eric. Um, the the next page there is uh, some circles. Those were the most uh, popular popular destinations that people wanted to get to. And obviously downtown, there's a lot of different things they wanted to get to. But we found it interesting that Giant Eagle was um, one of the top priorities mm -hmm. where people wanted this to get. This is going to be a grant to put these sidewalks in. This will uh, be seeking grant money. That grant money won't be av available to 2000 until 2024. Uh, yeah, so, but, you know, and this is what Mark's no, great at doing, is, is laying the groundwork. We need the sidewalks. You know, and we, it's just like the park master plan. you got to have it. We need to get people in Beverly to want the sidewalks yeah. forever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they need it. They, yeah. it. they do. Yeah. And uh, so then um, you, they just go through and uh, show you some different uh, plans, um, where it would be, um, and then... This, this page uh, is, is the most telling because that's going to tell you that, you know, we're going to have turn lanes and, and how they're proposing to do, you know, keep the turn lane, but they call them sharrows where you, you're letting uh, drivers know that they're sharing the space with people on a bicycle. So we'll have some of that. Then where are you uh, talking about now? This, no, this page I, have, I see the page, but where? Uh, that, that, that's what it'll be made of. So wherever you see turn lanes, that that's a similar plan that, that we'll have so it kind of fits with what oh, uh, either way yeah so you you see on the right hand side of that drawing the sidewalk think of the sidewalk at um, bell stores okay so yes. the sidewalks already existing we'd have to extend it to five feet because right now it's only four but then we'd have um, a, a strip of either trail or pavement and then you have the roadway. You and mean tear up everything that they just finished at Bell Store? Uh, <laughs> that's, Real? No. It's the government. It's the government. We, what government? <laughs> it's a transportation grant. So we'd have to meet their guidelines uh, for the width of the, the trail. They probably just add it on. They wouldn't have to tear it up. Probably. I don't know what they'd do, Bonnie. I'm just telling you that that's, yeah. that's what they said in the meeting. Yeah. So. Like Shell, anything to add to that? Am I... Just that it's a multi-directional side. Yeah, good point. It's a five-foot sidewalk, but it's multi-directional. If you can go off directions. So are we talking like at that at that place, and then maybe at the at the um, Beverly? What about the Beverly intersection there by the uh, all the stores in that down by Giant Eagle? Is that part of it? Yeah. yeah. Is there yeah. going to be yeah. Every, everything it from Bell all stores all the way downtown? So, you know, when you get the narrow part, there's narrow parts of the road, and we're going to have to, you know, we'll do redo the striping to, to make space for this, uh, this pathway. So, and, we, and they're working within the easement that we have, the boundary. So, all right, I'm boring people to death. So, um, it was a good meeting. It was um, very good. They almost did wheel, uh, cartwheels in their wheelchairs. Yeah. So. All right, hang on to that. We'll continue with meetings and following up. So, um, I did a pass out, a handout, and uh, so I'm moving on to the law director, Mr. Thomas. Uh, no report. Okay. Um, any questions? All right, third reading. Motion to approve Ordinance 719. Second. We have a motion by Dan Booker Jr., seconded by Danny Loesch. Any discussion? Roll call? I have a question. Oh, okay. You made the deadline. Um, I think Dan might have cleared this up for me, but didn't we already approve this for 23000 why is it? Let's see, we approved the purchase order, order and, and the purchase order, but we haven't approved an actual ordinance to make the appropriation. Yeah. Okay. okay. You okay, Eric? I'm okay. Okay. Roll call. Scott Schwab? Yes. Bonnie Donaldson? No. 
Biddy Loesch? Yes. Dan Parker Jr.? Yes. Eric Winnington? Yes. No. Okay. Second read. Ordinance 819 and ordinance amending ordinance 4518 and providing for the changes to previous and authorized appropriations 131,250 for the water tower design. Ordinance 919 and ordinance amending ordinance 4518 and providing for changes to previously authorized appropriations 11,500 for engineering field surveying stuff removal at Community Park. First reading resolutions. Resolution 419, a resolution by the Council of the City of Canopolis, Ohio, to enter into an agreement with the Board of Trustees of Lawrence Township, Stark County, Ohio, for maintenance and repair of shared roadways. Purchase orders. Purchase order number 12,105 for WatchGuard Video, Inc., in the amount of 5,975 for the new camera system and the new police cruiser. Motion to approve PO 12105 to watch guard video ink in the amount of $5,975. We have a motion by Dan Booker Jr., second by Eric Whittington. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. That's going to be added to the new the Ford <coughs> under PO uh, 12105. Yeah, all this is um, a series of different, um, the bigger POs that we need for the, for the cruiser. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, is there a, a light package coming yeah. uh, to be added? Statewide emergency products will be the uh, the light package that would be on the the third or the the third PO down. Oh, okay. All right, great. Thanks. Any other discussion? Roll call. Bonnie Donaldson. Yes. Sue Mayberry. Yes. Eric Wellington. Yes. Dan Booker Jr. Yes. Danny Loach. Yes. Scott. Yes. Purchase order number 12,101 to Utility Truck Trader LLC in the amount of $21,631.50 for a 2001 international bucket truck. Move to approve PO 12101. Second. A motion by Danny Lowe, seconded by Dan Booker Jr. Any discussion? Roll call. Dan Booker Jr. Yes. Eric Whittington. Yes. Sue Mayberry. Yes. Danny Lush. Yes. Scott Schwab. Yes. Bonnie Donaldson. Yes. Purchase order number 12,102 to statewide emergency products and the amount of $8,507 for equipment on the new police car. Motion to approve PO 12102 to statewide emergency products and the amount of $8,507. Second. <coughs> we have a motion by Sue Mayberry, seconded by Scott Schwab. Any discussion? Roll call. Scott Schwab? Yes. Danny Loesch? Yes. Sue Mayberry? Yes. Jim Booker Jr.? Yes. Eric Whittington? Yes. Bonnie Donaldson? Yes. Purchase order number 12,103 to George Wakeham Ford, Inc., in the amount of $31,842.50 for a 2020 police explorer. Motion to approve PO 12103 to George Wakeham Ford Inc. in the amount of $31,842.50. Second. We have a motion by Dan Booker Jr., seconded by Danny Loesch. Any discussion? And this was a budgeted item. Yes. Yeah. And this, this is state bid. Um, Wakeham always matches the state bid, and apparently, um, from years past, that's gone up $4,000. So it's usually 20 something. But uh, they seem to just be getting more expensive as the years go on. Yeah, we're seeing that. I mean, it, the installation on the light package, didn't we have maintenance uh, install that? No, Nate does a great job. Yeah. And, um, I mean, that's the value that we have having them do that. A lot of departments have a company come out and put them in, but uh, it's just we know how we like everything set up. When there's a problem, we know where every fuse is, where every line's run, where every hole's cut, and, and all that. So <coughs> just such a great benefit uh, doing it, and it's obviously a, a money saver as well. Yeah, it looks like a pretty substantial increase on that light package, too. Yeah, from, yeah you know, I thought I remember that being 5000 yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, roll call. Scott Schwab? Yes. Bonnie Donaldson? Yes. Danny Loesch? Yes. Dan Booker Jr.? Yes. Eric Whittington? Yes. Sue Mayberry? Yes. Purchase order number 12,115 to Ohio Valley Archaeology, Inc. in the amount of $15,930.33 for the Phase 1 Archaeology Survey for the Community Park. 
Motion to approve PO 12115 in the amount of 15,930 33 to Ohio Valley Archaeology. Second. We have a motion by Scott Schwab, second by Dan Booker Jr. Any discussion? Did they give you a complete itemization mark on the fees and services that it's going to cost? It's got two lump sums, one with them doing the digging and one with us doing the digging. So you're sure that if we do the digging, you know, because we can contact the local farmer you're right. and get it for <laughs> quite pretty cheaply. So what happens if they find something? We got an arc, you know, a dig going on too? here and everything's <laughs> going to be held up. Yeah, everything's going to be held up. Yeah. 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 They, they, have, they might have six months or something like that. That's at Jackson where they found artifacts. What's that? They they found artifacts in Jackson at Noble's Pond. Noble's Pond, right? And I think they gave them six months to right. do whatever they wanted right. so to, part to of mitigate it, yeah. that. So was that a phase two to this then? So maybe I, actually, they had an archaeological <laughs> dig. Oh, okay. okay. They actually uncovered a paleolithic campsite. And are we going to have to pay for that if there's a no, dinosaur State, under I think Kent State Robert University did. came out and did that. Well, no, okay. there was no cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're just doing our due diligence now. I mean, this area here wouldn't be affected by the existing uh, you know, building of the Y right now. No, the Y is not on this site. We got it. We, we got nailed because we're trying to fill in the weapons. So it's all a part of the mitigation. I mean, Corps of Engineers, federal government steps in and back. But, okay. But yet, yet, if I'm right, Keith, are we, we're doing the, the retention pond, right where the wetlands was? Right. It's a natural low spot anyways, so we're just digging up where the water was going for years. Well, we got, we got, we're going to have to do the whole, they want to do the whole site though. So. Okay. Uh, and that will impact us if whatever we put in the park as far as a splash pad or basketball court. Well, once it's done, it's done. So what they'll go in, they'll go in and, and try to remove stuff. And I don't think there's a campsite there that usually goes around bodies of water. Mm -hmm. So they'll go Maybe in and have they find stuff. stuff, they'll go in and, and retreat. I, I was told it would take 30 days. Okay. And it's just a confined area, right? Basically where the wetlands are? Oh, the 10-acre parcel. Okay. So they pull up a woolly mammoth, that, that wise can be put off for like two years. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That could be a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, enough discussion. Go ahead, roll call. Bonnie Donaldson. I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> the purchase order for the yes. archaeologist. Yes. Yes. Sue Mary? Yes. Eric Whittington? Yes. Dan Booker Jr.? Yes. Danny Loesch? Yes. Scott Yes. There's no bills to report today. All right. Old new other business? I have a couple couple question or a couple yeah. things. Um, the water tower grant, um, there's an there's another grant in which more money could be received towards this, right? Well, same grant resubmitting with with the, with the engineering study. That's Are we going to hold off? Yeah, exactly. Okay, I just didn't know if yeah. that was the decision. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And I just wanted to, we have, you know, the, the naming of the bridge issue. Mm -hmm. um, I talked to Bill Romer, mm -hmm. and I talked to a gentleman by the name of um, Andrew Justin Chesnick from ODOT. And the bridge is now... Lance Corporal Michael Stangelo, USMC Memorial Bridge. It is named. It's in the Ohio Revised Code. There it is right there. And that's what Mr. Duvall told us that Ohio night. Revised Code 5534.152. Now, effective 32019, which was exactly the date he said it was going to happen. Now, um, I called Bill Romer. I talked to Bill Romer, who had worked on this, trying to get a feel for what was going on. 20 years ago when the Albrecht family came to the then council to rename the bridge, the council said no. The council said we will allow you to have a uh, memorial plaques put on the bridge. So the bridge was never officially dedicated. And once you and to dedicate a bridge, you've got to go through a house bill. The Stangelo family were in, was was in a um, 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 group of people for people that have lost family members, you know, um, 
bridges for the fallen. Well, I think yeah. Called. yeah, they were in an organization who pointed them in the direction of that sort of memorialization. So what they did is they went to a state rep, Lynn Slaby. They said, we'd like to name the Canal Fulton Cherry Street Bridge. Right. This Dorset. is all everything that we we covered when Well I I didn't I didn't know I didn't know all this. So they went through all the right channels. Right. That's what they said. They they followed they, went, they did everything they were told to do by law. They so went the to Maryland Slady. Well the, but can I finish? Well, I, I just want to get us to the point where we understand, Sue, that you know the Ohio Revised Code you gave us, right? Right. Is saying that they don't have the right to name that bridge without our resolution? No. Okay. No. That's, no. Okay, Mr. No. Thomas. So we have. No. Okay. No. All right. No. Tell um, us what you have. Marilyn Slaby sponsored the bill. The bill passed the House and the Senate. It passed on March the 20th. And when I talked to the guy from ODOT, he said that on September the 4th, 2018, the Highway Maintenance Department contacted the mayor mm -hmm. and the street superintendent to let them know that plaques were being made and were going to be delivered to us with this name on it, Stangelo family. So um, the gentleman told me that, you know, once the house bill passes, ODOT uh, the, the highway maintenance gets the signs. Where we come into play is this. We can decide if we're going to affix them or not. That's it. This, the, the bridge is renamed. We're going to get signs. We're going to be invoiced for the signs. And it's up to us to decide if we're going to put them up or not. But the bridge is renamed after the gentleman. And the Albrechts just didn't get a house bill passed. And whether that was the way it go the way the law was 20 years ago, I don't know. But the, but these people just followed the right steps. But why didn't we hear about it back in September? Um, I did bring it to your attention a couple times throughout the course of last year. Mr. Hosking and I talked about it. And but it didn't pass until March. Right, we were trying to find September. out what was going on, Sue, and well, I'll let Mr. Felma speak to it because but, you know, like you said, you gave us the high revised code that said they didn't have the right to rename the bridge. Well, I just found it by uh, by sheer accident. You know, how do you name a bridge? Right. And it popped up, and I just gave it to well, you guys and, as and as, the, as as uh, and I, you know, something to read. I didn't yeah. say that it was that was the way it works. Yeah. I just thought, well, here's something for us to look at. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that's a question. The high revised code says they are to notify us first. Now, does the house bill trump their own code or not? I don't know. Well, it's Ohio. It's, it's in there now. Notify us and, and give us it. We, we're allowed to provide input. Well, it's because we're this, our bridge is located within the municipality. That's what. That's the way the law reads. And then they the they state don't give owns us the that bridge. The part. state owns the bridge. Right. Exactly. The state so owns the bridge. It, does the House bill or Senate bill trump their own rules or not? I don't know. I mean, He's called it Ohio Home Rule, whatever that yeah. is, for 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 their purposes here. Well, Ohio Home Rule is something we have too. Right? But that's so, what he brought up, and yeah. this is what he told me, and yeah. Just to clear so things I up, guess, it's, it's renamed. And well, that's you know. the question, Sue, is do we want to put the uh, sign up? Because well, the that's, our only, that's our only thing to have to decide. <clears throat> Everything else is done. And, and I think, I, don't, I, I like to think that we still have an option, and Mr. Feldman can weigh in on it, because they didn't, we need a ruling to tell us whether or not yeah, they they well, followed their own law. Well, after they, he told us all this that night, mm -hmm. I went and checked all this out. Right. That's how mm -hmm. I found this all out. Yeah. There's nothing that he told us that wasn't accurate. So, like he said, I called him the next day and talked to him about you know doing anything differently, and he said the bridge is named, and that's all he needs. So mm -hmm. that was his response. Mr. Felmuth, so, uh, any suggestions? Should we send a letter to uh, try to send a letter to the? Uh, um, State representatives first and say, hey. If you wish, I don't know if it's going to change anybody's mind, but I'm uh, standing by my opinion. I left it at the April last meeting, but they did not, okay, consult us on renaming the bridge. And the bridge is located entirely within the municipal corporation. And they have to ask council for approval to do so. The lawmaker did, not do, did not do her due diligence. She didn't. And it was, it was at but a bad time when the 
you know, the, the state was without a Speaker of the House, and Kirk Schering had to fill in, and so they were in scramble mode, and they put a bunch of bills into the same package and passed the whole thing and didn't, like you said, give it due diligence. So now we have to deal with it, so that's what uh, we're asking is, do we want to just go with it, put those signs up, or do we want to respond to the state legislature and say you didn't follow the rules? So I'm looking for some direction. I'd say they didn't follow the rules to respond to them. I agree. The rule is rule. Well, Marilyn Slade is no, more, no longer there. She's the one that should have done that. Bill Romer's in there now, and he basically said, you know, she should have contacted the city yeah. Yeah. to let us know that was going to be going down. But she didn't do it. Dan? Yeah, I, let's hold off. Let's not put anything up until we get some clarification from the state. Dan? Yeah. Scott. Yeah. All right. So either I'll draft a letter, or Mr. Felmuth will draft a letter, similar to what our law director did back when the Albrechts were trying to go through the same thing, where we, you know, basically our law director said, "No, this is the rule, and you have to follow it," and that's why the Albrecht never. It makes never, sense, but yeah. I'm just yeah, um, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling right. you what I found out. Yeah, it, it'll be an impasse, but I mean, the we, we have the law on our side. So that's what they think. So, all right, we'll draft the letter and get it off there. All right, any other, um, anything else, Sue? No, Old sir. Old new other business? No, sir. Um, Mr. Um, Booker? No, I got nothing. All right, report of special committees and citizens' comments. Why are you looking at me? Oh, I thought he was looking at me. I'm like, why are you looking at me? Well, I was going to talk about Thanks for your service, and uh, you know, Mr. Workman sent a letter. HP sent a letter, you know, because they're frustrated and disappointed. Um, and and I will, you know, share that. You know, next year is the charter review, and um, you know, one of the things that I feel is important is we review buildings downtown, and everything that gets done has that level of scrutiny. But we're building. You know, last year we built. Uh, uh, a new dollar store, uh, a, the new Bell stores two years ago, and uh, now we're building the YMCA, and those are all going on within the city, but there's never any input from the city's standpoint, like an architectural review committee, like some other communities have, where, you know, what are the finishes going into these buildings? We don't know. So that's one of the things that I think next year when uh, we look at our charter review, we may want to expand the scope of um, having some kind of input from the community. And I think that's important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think after being here for one year now, I think the biggest cluster in this town is nobody works together. We've got all these groups that want to do all these different things, and nobody works together. Everybody steps on each other's toes. Everybody argues. And then it prolongs things, and nothing gets done. And if it does, it doesn't get done right. I think it's ridiculous. And I think that, you know, a city council meeting, there should be a representative from every single group sitting in this in, in here. So, you know, when something comes to the table that pertains to that group, 
and they can start talking about it. We can work on things together. So, so they don't feel like they're being blindsided yeah. by it because, oh, well, we weren't at the council meeting. We didn't yeah, hear there, about it. There's absolutely, you know, I've noticed but, You know, and, and that sounds great to say. Oh, I know. <laughs> but you're talking about people who work diligently and tirelessly, giving up their time and getting nothing well, for it. You know, the park board. But, but, you know, yeah. Earl are, seeing him. Yeah. That's not my point. My okay. point is there's no cohesiveness between the groups and the city. And we, you know, if we're going to keep, if we're going to, this is going to be a, a, a shit show forever until people start working together. Excuse my language. But, you know, that, and they don't even have to come to the meetings. I mean, there is this beautiful thing called email now. I don't know if anybody's used it, but I mean, we can constantly be keeping each other in the loop on things and never have to see each other face to face if we don't want to, you know? Oh, or I have a monthly meeting where one person from each organization gets together and they brainstorm and they talk about what's going on and they work together. Each organization could have designated people from that organization so the same person's yes. not showing up all the time. You know, you could, there's all kinds of ways yeah. of working it there, I have I have seen none of that and that has caused nothing but it's, it's just one fire after another. Well, we have it, 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 it's a, We waste so much already. time, we don't get shit done. We have, we have done. Eric, Eric, we have liaisons at HPC and planning. So we can have right now. We already have one. Yeah. All right. So All right. <laughs> okay. Any I'm other comments? It's frustrating. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm frustrated for the Heritage Society. I'm frustrated for the Chamber of Commerce. I'm frustrated for, I'm frustrated for everybody because nobody's doing anything together. And I've been saying the same thing about us in the township. Since I've been on, I've been on four years and haven't been able to do anything about that. I would love to see more cohesiveness with the township. And until it happens, this, this is gonna this is gonna be a current uh, current thing. I I I'm telling, I don't, don't want to like blow some, my horn here, but like Dan, Dan, you know, Dan, you know, you went to uh, a Lawrence Township meeting. Yep. I try to go to every Lawrence Township meeting, and I um, love the fact that you do that. I will tap say that. Um, tourism. It just goes on and on. I don't know how many times I see Shell Rossi at these meetings. So. We're trying. She represents. Shell, you're the glue that holds it all together. Right. For us. <laughs> it's your fault, Shell. I guess it is. <laughs> and I'm right. sorry for speaking up like that, but that's after hearing everybody for the past several months talking about all this stuff. I mean, that's that's exactly what's happening. There's yeah. nothing. All right, we need to work together. Donna Mateko, 2001 Bird Drive. You're getting good, Donna. There you go. <laughs> I came to a planning and zoning com uh, committee meeting last Tuesday, I believe, and it was going to be um, brought up that the zoning and planning committee was going to recommend to council that I basically hire an attorney to resolve my issue, and I'm going to have to basically take it up with the owner of the property. So I'm a little disappointed. I feel pretty invisible, actually, that nothing was brought up at this meeting today about that planning and zoning committee meeting. I'm not and, done, Donna. And how you're going to proceed. Well, we're at the, we're at, we're at the, are we at the end? Citizen comments for open discussion. Okay. So you're a citizen and we're here to discuss it, so. Okay, so what are we going to, what's I, the. I would defer to the law director because uh, I, like I told you, I don't have a law degree, and mm -hmm. so Mr. Belmuth would oh, throw me into the process. There you go, buddy. That's <laughs> that's why you get the big bucks and you got letters right after your name. <laughs> I, I think what you had, Mr. Taker, the situation had a nuisance situation. Okay, obviously, and uh, I I deeply sympathize with your problem, but um, I think you should consult with a private attorney, okay, to see what your options are. We're getting a new owner in there to take over that place, so you know, we might be able to get this thing resolved if everyone just starts talking to one another and see if they can't move those you know, trucks out of there. So I, mean, now, I, I understand where you're coming from, believe me. Yeah. And so, I sympathize with the situation. Well, you sympathizing with me doesn't help me two years from now when the problem comes back because you guys are, may all be gone or changed around or new faces here, and the problem will come back. Trust me, I've been there for 16 years fighting it. So my main question is, I've been told a couple times that um, it is because it is. It just is. This actually was said at the, at the planning me meeting about how it is um, zoned non-conforming. Mm -hmm. And when asked to see a certificate, I have not, I've not been handed a certificate as of yet about why they are zoned non-conforming or when that happened or what keeps them non-conforming for the last 40 years. So there's... Uh, according to our code, it would have to be 
discontinue okay that business for a two year period of time. Okay. There, okay. However, yeah. right. however, mm -hmm. there is a provision in the Ohio Revised Code when it was um, <coughs> changed in uh, 85. You can actually uh, lower the time to six months mm -hmm. for non-conforming use if a uh, council would uh, desire to do that. Mm -hmm. They can take it from two years to six months. Yeah, but my main question is, is where is their certificate? Because I've been told that the non-conforming use has changed over the years. Their first, their non-conforming use was supposed to be slaughterhouse. And then it was just because they're parking trucks there all night. And then it was because they're processing deers. There's been a whole litany of reasons why they're still being maintained as non-conforming use, but no one has actually shown me a certificate that says, this is why ABC, they're zoned non-conforming use. They're not even, to me, in my estimation, if there's no certificate and it's just sheer word of mouth for the last 40 years, then they're not non-conforming use. There should be zone B1 just like it shows on your map. Correct? That, that required never certificate. Yeah, the planning commission didn't it, say that. They It says it in your ordinances. Yeah, they they should have received something in nineteen seventy five. Okay. You know, so we've been going on word of mouth for right, the last that, forty years. Way, I, I I talked to Jackson and Jackson doesn't issue these either unless the property owner asks for one. The property owner who is legal not performing asks for one. Okay. And they issue it. So how when is I, when I asked the zoning inspector in Jackson how many they had, she had no idea. It's a case by case basis. And that's the way Steve says it to me. He's been a planner, he's got a master's degree, he's zoning, been doing zoning as long as I'm doing what I'm doing. And the planning commission, that's what they said. I mean, the legal non conforming use has been established. Well, how, show it to me. Can I can I interject yeah. something here? Yeah. Did you ever find the chapter eleven eighty five non conforming uses in the in our code? I, th I think I... Because this is this is the very first thing, you know, it's non-conforming use. The very first paragraph, purpose. The purpose of this chapter, 1185, is to provide for the continuation of uses that do not conform to the existing zoning, but which were in operation prior to the enactment of this zoning ordinance or amendments thereto. And that was passed in 72. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. Then, there's other information in here, but what what... what it, interests me is um, under regulations it says uh, under H certificate of non-conforming use within one year of the effective date of this zoning ordinance so the zoning ordinance is 1972 mm -hmm. within one year of the effective date of this zoning ordinance the zoning inspector shall issue a certificate of non-conforming use to all non-conforming use property the use of which does not conform to the provisions of the use zone in which the property is located. Correct. Correct. Now, Correct. That, That's why I keep asking well, for what, what this tells me is a year after this was passed, all the non-conforming <coughs> use op people operating in the, in the city at that time, within a year of that date, should have gotten a Certificate of non-conforming use. Am I? Am I? That's what it says. Yeah. So that is what it says. So, so where are where where, where are they? Do we have any? Do we have any non-conforming use certificates no. on file for any non-conforming legal non-conforming use business in in no. the city? No. You don't even have a form for it. So well, there. That to me is crazy, but. I'm just, this is from our code. This is not Jackson. This is not right. Green. Yeah, nobody right. has that in our code but us that I found it would be certificate. Well, it's been there since 72. Yeah. Well, that's when I was in high school. Yeah, I was in fifth grade. So yeah. I'm basically so, I mean, just know, saying there's something not right here. No, there is something not right. So, so what you're trying to do now is you're trying to pass it off as a responsibility of him back in 1970 to know that's your what ordinances. Supposed to have been issued. He's supposed to know your ordinance, and, and he's supposed to know to come in here and file that paperwork, right? No, the city's supposed well, to this came up how many years ago exactly. with you? Exactly. This has been years. here since 72. Yes, yeah. this has been going on for 16 years. It still doesn't change the fact that it's a non-conforming use. It does change the fact. It does change the fact. I don't know what happened. It's your ordinance. Because 1972, I was a junior in high school. I don't care what you... That doesn't matter. It's your job now. I don't know. 
I will interject here. That, That's you know, really all I can, based, I can inter interject. Based on, I don't know anything else to say. You know, like I told you, Donna, and, and I tried to share this with you, it, it, it's going to, if you look at case law. So let me ask you this question. Is the Planning and Zoning Committee now starting to file nonconforming certificates? I no. gave them a, I, I, I requested a copy of one from Jackson for Earth and Wood. So do you have one on the farm? Do you have one? On the farm? Mr. Midday does, does, yes. Okay, I, I can see that one too. But but I gave it to Steve. I said, Steve, why don't we create one of our own now? And then and then if council wants us to, we can go. I, I don't know. There are no more non conforming uses, it variances in this city because there never were any because there are no certificates. Certificate All of that is out the window. Well, that that's your opinion. Yeah, it's only and, and what you're going to have to look at is case law, Donna, and, 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 and I, I told you that from the beginning, and, and that's where we're at, is we're in the middle of something between a city business and a city residence. And yes, it never should have happened, but it happened, and we can't take a side. That's my opinion. You, you can't take a side. They're your rules. I, Donna, I'm just telling you, if you look at case law where people have gone to court over these things, and, and that's what I would, I think you need to seek so legal I have advice. So I have to spend money to go hire an attorney. I'll also tell you this, and I can look it up for you if I'd like, I, I, if, if you need me to. One of your ordinances is that if I have to go seek legal counsel to obtain records that don't exist, you're paying for it. That's fine. And that's what I'm telling you to do is At seek that, legal counsel. Okay, so then I'm back here 30 days later. The first time I came here, I wanted something in writing. I wanted a piece of paper in writing telling me what the city was going to do or not do. And so that's what I want now. That is also in your ordinance that you have to give me something if I ask for it as a citizen of this city. And you have three days to do it. I gave you 30. That's the public records request? It's anything in writing that I want. Yes, they have okay. to get back to me saying, okay, well, we need more time. We have to search records. We have to do X, Y, Z. I don't know if it, it's, it's a document that's already created. Is that what you're talking about? No, no. That's basically what you're looking for is us to say we don't have any records on it. I, I want you to put it in writing telling me what you're going to do or not do as a city government in this instance. That's what I want. That, once again, I'll refer that to the law director. So how many more days do I need to have that happen? Ms. Montego, I strongly recommend you obtain an opinion of your own counsel on, on this matter. I really do. I already have. And I'm asking you for a written... Is, I, it's, is it your business yet? You want to know well, who my counsel is now? Well, we're going to talk to him or her. He'll send you a letter, I guess, when it's appropriate. I want to know what the city's going to do in writing. You don't want to give me that. Well, well, once you're making a legal counsel, then basically between our legal counsel and your legal counsel. So then I want you to put it in writing saying that you're not going to do anything for me, that you've recommended that I go get legal counsel. That's what I want then. Okay. Didn't we talk about the, the noise the noise ordinance is what well, see, is that, an that's, issue that's right now? That's the whole issue. If council considers it a nuisance, then doesn't council have the right to do something they do <laughs> is this the noise ordinance um, 50909 noise making and noise amplifying devices um, because I don't see anything here with decibel levels in it is there something else that is there another ordinance that has actual decibel no, we amended that a couple years ago and there was nothing about it no oh there's no decibel so that's two ordinances that's the only no noise ordinance I could find in our co in our codified but How do you consider? How do you? How do you? How do you deal with someone saying that there's a noise that disrupts the? Because I know people here can't even hear it in their how in their houses where they live. How do you tell somebody that the their quality of life has got to just remain because we can't enforce our noise ordinance? Because I think that's what planning said. We have the ability to enforce the, the noise ordinance. Well, I think I think it's, it's very ambiguous. And, well, we got to unbe unambiguous it, don't we? Yeah, so I think what comes into, into play is how it's zoned. You know, it's uh, not zoned anything. <laughs> well, Mr. Wortman said we can't deal with the zoning, but we can deal with the noise. We thought that's what he said. I don't the two believe, separate things. Yeah, I think um, dealing with the noise, 
you know, in, in residential, in zone, you could apply that language to it. But when it comes to a, uh, and again, I don't know what the zoning is. I think that's what's up for interpretation. It says B1 on every map I've ever seen. And when you when you even come to a business district, the noises are, are it's, it's thought of differently. I know, it's just that I can't believe that we, that it's like our, all our hands are tied to do anything. Because I sure is, I sure am not going to make a decision here about anything. If I can't even read my own code and, and see what what the what what it offers for remedy of this sort of thing, why, why is planning not able to address the zoning? Isn't that they what have they're they have they have addressed it? They it's non-conforming use. They say it is legal non-conforming for for their current use, which is which was industrial in the township. I don't know if they're still slaughtering animals there or not, but the trucks going in and out has been going on unimpeded, so they, that, that use has been established. And they, and they claim they don't need a certificate to, to verify that. That's what they're saying. And, so, and that's what yeah. our zoning inspector is telling us with his research he's done on case law, and that's where I would refer everybody to. And I know Donna, it stinks. I, I, you asked me the last time what I can do, and I said nothing. And, you said we'll see about that, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. that's that's the way I, I see it. Just like our, all of our frustration would be to do something for you, but we're in the middle of it. So I'm sorry. Do, do uh, would you continue to this conversation when the police officers have showed up and the trucks have been running? I mean, isn't it kind of a judgment call on the party officers? Is it nuisance noise? No. I mean, I mean we. I mean, how do you how do you Ascertain how do you come to the conclusion of something of a nuisance if you don't really have a decibel level or anything else? And, and well, outside of a business district, we just use our common sense. You know, if a resident is uh, annoyed, you know, that's what alerts us to that specific, uh, and we just use our reasonableness to determine it, if it's too loud or whatnot. And then, then, I mean, because there's all kinds, when the band practices up at the Northwest High School, you know, there are just so many different. Uh, uh, variables that's involved with noise and uh, so it's just it's, it's a case-by-case -case, uh, basis but three trucks running all night long yeah, so I know that's 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 somebody that's brought up uh, there's the a dispatcher. wall somewhere about standing trucks and I really like that and I think maybe we should look at that in a that in a committee that it's too. the expeditious yeah. loading and unloading in any loading or unloading zones and, and then we, we as law enforcement, it. can take that and use our discretion on that. So if somebody's delivering down at house, you know, uh, or whatever, and they're there 15, 20, half hour longer, that's, we have discretion in common sense. Right. But if somebody's sitting there on Sunday. At five. In at the five in the afternoon until, I mean, that is where I think we could. Exactly. So if we had something yeah, like so that, that I think that would be very helpful for everybody. And so that that is my one of my main gripes is I, I bring it to council and you don't even you don't even start to work on a, an ordinance or a revision of an ordinance or an addition or an amendment or a variance or anything else. You don't even make an attempt. You just send me over to Felman. And now I have to spend my own money to go hire an attorney because you guys won't even you guys you you, I'm so, I'm so over the top. So, you know, this is, so, so when the noise is going on, the police or whoever go to the provisions. And you don't even have an ordinance for them to enact. I understand. Uh, but know. he goes to provisions to yeah. hear the noise. Yeah. He's on their property, which is non-conforming use. What happens when a, when a person that maybe doesn't even know where the noise is coming from calls the police to their house and they're saying I'm hearing this noise I don't know where it's coming from and you're on their property your property is being invaded by the noise so how do we just tell this person like you well I'm sorry but that business up there is allowed to do that and I mean the police go to someone's house and tell someone someone at their home or your have they ever been to your home to hear it yes Okay. Yes. See, I okay. I stood in my side yard, and it's difficult for me to call the police because I know they don't have any. 
I teach it, 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 Yeah, I'm calling them out for a nonsense, nuisance crap when there's more important things in the city to be going on. And in fact, they don't really have any kind of... If the truck driver closes the door or and rolls says, up the go window... Away. Yeah, go away. The, that's the, the, the police officer has to walk away. Right. It's lunacy to me. Yeah. And that's what you want us to do is create... And, and that's what we're going down is that route of, is that a nuisance and what can we do? But what I think we're finding is... The case law, because what we try to pass an ordinance that that points out or picks on that business, then they're going their lawyers going to be coming in here saying well, you what, can't do that. What I find my numbing is you're worried about paint chips with lead in them getting into the air, but the diesel fuel running in my backyard is of no consequence. Seriously. Well, we can yeah. revisit. You know, back in 2005, City Council did draft they, legislation. They tried twice. And, and, and the difference between what <coughs> happened there was Avalon Foods is zoned industrial. They have every right to do what they're doing up there. And as far as I know, there aren't any residents up there. Right. But this is non-conforming use, and it says B1 on that map. That's the difference that separates them and Avalon Foods. So George Mazarek took his butt up to Avalon Foods and said, oh, we got a problem down here. we got a troublemaker. That would and about? Avalon Foods okay. came in here and said, no, no, no. So they tabled it, never to be heard from again. You want to, I can have that at the next meeting for review. I think we should. That's fine. We'll look at, look it over, let the law director look it over, see if maybe we could tweak it, if there's an issue that could affect other businesses. But we need to do something. and. And this is the body to get it done. Let's do it. So. All right. That's fine. Uh, last thing I have for council under old, new, and other business, uh, or I'm sorry, under citizens' comment. Because Hold on. Are you are you okay with that? Please do something. Okay. Something. Well, okay. I just want to make sure you were done before we got back. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, the renaming of Dakota Street. And I'll kind of defer to uh, Keith on this as far as. Um, the the issue is we have residents. We'll have people living on. Dakota Street where we never had people living on Dakota Street now with the house numbers they were assigned It's sending them down to the other end of Dakota Street down by Water Street So the easiest solution I think is to rename the street and we've had proposals and um, I, I haven't thought about that. Okay. Why don't we just change the sign to Dakota Street instead of what it was it say now Dakota Street Right. It's supposed to be Dakota. What's it supposed to be? Um it should say Dakota Drive, according well, to our... Well, then that's just making the sign that says Dakota Drive. Yeah, because the diagonal road, it runs north, I mean, west, that's south. Is that why the GPS can't pick it up? I don't know. I, well, the GPS does. What what Dakota, is the right-of-way goes all the way from Lever across Cherry to the street does. And half that time, the GPS the takes... The street doesn't? No, the street doesn't it, go all the way through. It dead ends at water, and then... So the GPS the will take people over to that side, or the, or the lever side, and, and, and people never find the, the side on the other side of the chair. Is it another? Yeah, it's, it's another paper, paper alley, alley, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a, it's a, a paper, paper alley. alley. So how do you yeah. Yeah. <coughs> you have to go around the field? And no, it's a paper alley, Bonnie. Yeah. So imagine going through like Vermont Place and all these other places. The GPS finds these, and then they go to find the road, and it's not there. I, what I, does Keith yeah. think? Keith, what do you think should be the solution? Does it, don't you assign na uh, street names in town? The Address, addresses. Addresses. Yeah. Oh, addresses like the numbers. Correct. Okay, sorry. Um, street names. And usually developers will assign a street name. The Planning Commission approves them. So usually the Planning Commission, in this case, kick this back to the City Council. For well, the how does street. it get finalized to where it then becomes well, nice something that will direct no, people to the right place? How does that happen? Does changing the name automatically make the GPS pick it up? Well, yeah, it'll it. make Google pick yeah, it up. Record it the recorder's office. Record it, right? It's picked up on the maps and yeah, no. We, I think so. We, I think we need a different name for it because we, we talked about using Dakota Street South and Dakota Street North, and then it's going to become that's North and South Dakota that's Street. And I, that's fine, but I think if we start getting into naming it after somebody, we're going to be right back to the bridge situation. Well, that's didn't what I Larry fear. Steiner bring this to your attention or zoning's yep. attention or somebody? Yep. And so plan came right. in with an issue and a solution. I mean, instead of worrying about putting the emotion into it. That's a 
What do you mean? It's <laughs> a bribe. What is? Larry Steiner. He paid the money. To have his name it. Oh, let him name it. I don't think it's a bribe at all. But Sounds to me like it. It's just naming rights. I guess. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's paying for the signs. Um, what do signs cost? I don't know. About a thousand dollars. Yeah. Windfall to the city, we could help offset the cost of recording um, the name change, all the paperwork that's with it. I don't know. Like I said, I, I think Maybe it we needs find we, out then. we need a different name. So you're saying it's a bribe if he pays for naming rights? Bonnie? That's what it sounds like. Okay. We've right. had several names brought up, mm -hmm. and he wants to name it after his wife, I understand, mm -hmm. that he would pay. Yeah. I've lived on Chris, Bob, and Dan in my life. So. <laughs> That's Shalmo. Yeah, and after his kids, yes, yeah. I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyways, I... Uh, yeah, I assume yeah. $1,000 so was off the Art Archives to survey it and flat it and everything else. Mm -hmm. That's what, the way I interpreted that email was yeah. he was actually paying us to do that because there was a cost for us to do it. Yeah. Now, it didn't look as a bribe. He was just paying us our... Going, paying towards our cost to do it. <clears throat> I think, Ms. Um, uh, didn't Mr. Steiner come to planning, mm -hmm. Mayor, about yep. a month and a half ago? Yep. And he had a sign already made up with yeah. Barbie on it? Yep, Barbie Place. Barbie right. Place? But didn't they change the, didn't they change Barbara, Barbara Street. Barbara, though? He Barbara Street. Barbara. Uh, he came Barbara. there initially yeah. to change it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah. <laughs> Because he was having a problem with right. getting traffic to... But according to our code, it needs to be called Barbara Drive, not Barbie Place. <laughs> follow okay. I don't like a, to pay $1,000 to get uh, an that, yeah, started. A, <laughs> 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 this, can I bid on a, an ordinance getting started? I'll start out at 1000 uh, Well, actually, I have... You know, we. I mean, this is going to come back over and over and over again, and um, I'll make a motion that, that oh, the fact that Mr. Steiner and his wife and came to a planning commission meeting <coughs> is representing the people on that street that are having issues with their G GPS and finding where they actually live. Correct. Correct. That's that the problem. They, that this street be allowed, and I'm not saying that to take his money. I'm just saying he was first come, first serve. I agree with that. Okay. Let him ha name the street and and we whatever it costs. a thousand dollars to one of the local charities. We don't well, no, want to use a price to offset our cost. Right. All I'm saying right. is he came. Research that has to be done. That's he yeah. came. Yeah. Cost involved and people willing yeah. to pay for it. Why not? No, we're not that much All right. That's my motion. That's your motion. We need a second. I'm sticking to it. Okay. Anybody you. thinks it's no. okay? We have a motion by Sue Mayberry, second by Dan Booker Jr. Any discussion? Roll maybe, call. Maybe we should put it out for bid. Hmm. Why just let one person do it? I'm going to get a thousand dollars for medication after this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a thousand dollars. I got a guy. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right. See, we can all laugh. Yes. All right. Uh, Got to laugh in America. Man. All right. Uh, now, Any other comments? We're we're. we're I'm saying Barbara Drive, Barbara Drive. Is what, that what drive or street, whatever it has to be. What does it have to be? I'll, I'll look, but it, since it's a northwest southeast diagonal, I think there has to be drive has to be assigned to it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, the yeah, I just to care about. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going with drive yeah. until we have to change it. All right, any other discussion? Roll call. Scott Schwab. Yes. Bonnie Donaldson. No. Danny Loesch. Yes. Sue Mayberry. Yes. Dan Booker Jr.? Yes. Eric Whittington? Yes. All right. I think that's it. Motion adjourned. adjourned. All right. Thank you.